I thank God this morning. My name is Santo, as uh, introduced. I'm glad that I can involve this morning in this worship time this morning. I, I give thanks to God. Sunday morning service, Sunday morning service, this is my first time coming and share with you. I want to thank the church for sending a sponsor letter to, for my family and I want to, I'm grateful for that. Because of this uh, entry visa, I can involve in many other areas of ministries in this country. So I want to thank you all for involving and uh, giving this blessing to us. May the Lord continue to bless your involvement in this ministry. I'm from Michina. And it's more than 20 years I've been involved in that ministry. I'm from Rangoon, Taiji, not far from Insane. Um, I was uh, uh, converted in Taunji, Shan State. From there on, I testified the goodness of Jesus all over the world. In 1993, I got to Mijina, Kachin State. And uh, to and from, I go to Jina in Rangoon, yes, involved in the training sessions of discipleship trainings. And in 1996, from 1996, I lived on there. In 1998, I got married with my bottom. Got three daughters. I started the I started the church ministries over there. But how about my daughter? Nani loaded? First, I started with uh, trainings. I didn't know by my channel fellowship look about it. And then you started fellowship there. I did fellowship league and a bit of my. I didn't know long anti piat can push on everybody from fellowship then and uh, advanced to church level. I didn't know long and look at a channel to me. Gee, at that job, I'll be it's about life of my eldest daughter. Is Sangani job, I'll be it's more than 15 years now. The Lord has prepared for me a Bible school over there too. It's similar as my daughter's age. It's 15 years. First, uh, systematically, I could uh, build up the church. And after that, I could... Um, I uh, beloved the Bible school systematically. <laughs> so wherever I preach, I have to change mics twice. Uh, it's, it's not the fault of the mic. So whenever I, I, I get wherever, yeah, always I have to change mic twice. I, I thank God for the very various, uh, you know, microphone. I thank God for serving the Lord and I uh, can stay together with my family. What I can tell you is I didn't start the church. I didn't start the Bible school. The Lord is the one who started all this ministry. In my plan, there is no such thing as church. I'm more interested in training centers. The Lord sent his people. And fellowship also, people come and started their fellowships. I can tell that the, the Lord started the church. The reason is, I 
denied many times not to start the church. Finally, I was, I was cornered to do the word of God. Let me share with you about how I started the church. We always uh, continuously do the training. At one time, uh, in one session, there was a big trouble, problems. Uh, other Christian organizations complained to the government about our training to stop this training center. So the authority called me and asked us to close down. The reason is because we didn't apply for permission to the government. We didn't ask for that. That's why they asked to close down. And they show us other people's complaint letters. And on the seal of those complaints, there was crosses. There's, there's therefore, there are two types of crosses. And the cross that Jesus died. And the, the cross that denied Christ. How about the cross on your neck? The cross that on your neck should should be uh, And the one that who denied Christ was on the cross too. And make sure that cross wouldn't be upon you. And then the authority said to me, Go and ask uh, permission from the uh, regional Commander. I don't know how to ask permission. I don't know how to write it. They, they wrote it for me. And they asked me, what is your organization? I told them I have no organizations. I don't understand any organization. I didn't grow up in an organization. I, I didn't go to Sunday school. I, I saw the church from outside. I never been inside the church. I was a Buddhist. Jesus in 1991. I received Jesus not inside the church. I went to a house and in that house I received Christ in that house. Therefore, I don't understand a church. I don't understand the organization. I, don't under, I didn't understand uh, to apply for permission. One thing I know is to share the goodness of Jesus. Do, do we need an uh, organization? Do we need uh, permission to the government? I didn't know. Now I know because they taught me. Therefore, I started the organization. And then the authority said, write and uh, the name of organization, one of the names. I, don't, I didn't know what to write. I got inside the, the, the uh, district office. And the Buddhist authority man wants to help me. The reason is because I'm younger than him. I'm serving God, therefore he wants, wanted to help me. But the, the, the problem is we, we don't have the same religion. He told me how he can help me. Write down the name of whatever organization. Make, uh, form a committee. At least you need 10 people. And uh, put your organization with back dates. Name. And I'm confused. The reason I didn't want to do it. Number one. 
uh, organization become very organization worldly system worldly system therefore i didn't want to do it today at chagaro and second point is tenengu ni ni rain jano bema do alu miaro i will lock into uh, a thing on sundays jano miaram phya shiko pa ro me and i need to be involved in uh, sunday services khaji do alu miao i couldn't go anyway Therefore, I didn't want to do organization. I don't know how to do it. But uh, that gentleman advised me. Oh, what we're going to do is three months training. And just do the organization three months. After that, tear that paper. You don't need it. At the moment, just put your application in. And after that, you don't want to do it, just tear, tear it apart. And uh, yeah, all the trainees didn't need to know the organization's name. Uh, only the authority should know. And then I agreed. And then I was thinking what to write. There, there are lots of names already have. And uh, shouldn't be same as other people. And then he asked me. And what's training you're going to do? And I told him this is for Christ's disciples' training. And then he advised me. And uh, if it is uh, Christ's discipleship, it's training, just omit the training part. And uh, just put church in it. And then it will become Christ's discipleship church. And uh, the government understand the church. And if it is fellowship or training, no, you wouldn't get any permission. So I agreed. Very quickly, within a, a week, I got permission. From the time on, I started that training uh, continuously. After three months, I didn't want to do it. I want to cancel it. But people who came to the training, and uh, they asked me to continue this training. Uh, therefore, I couldn't cut it off. And uh, whoever came to the training, the churches didn't like it. We didn't start the church. Because the, the, the people that came to our training, the churches expel their members from the church. And then they, they told them that when you die, we wouldn't cremate or conduct your funeral service. That's a threat. And uh, we can't help you with any social needs. So therefore they got into big trouble. So it became our, uh, it is our task to help them. And on Sundays, they have nowhere to go. On Sundays. And uh, the other Buddhist people become uh, believers in Christ. And uh, one day, I, I send them to a church in Michina. To uh, approach that church to receive this uh, convert. Buddhist convert. And this, uh, or the uh, phrase to receive him. So, because of the different race, they can't accept them. They can't receive him. And they are my friends. Uh, just do it yourself. Uh, we can't receive him in our So, church. who is going to help the Buddhist converts to grow into Christ? Therefore, finally, it's my, my until now it has become a church. Hallelujah. That helped people.
Therefore, I can tell this is not what I'm doing. It is the Lord as who is doing his job. It's growing bigger and bigger. A lot more disciples. And a lot more those who serve the Lord become. And after the, through the church, I could continue the trainings for disciples. My church is downstairs of a house. And we continue that training in that uh, downstairs of the house. And uh, after quite a number of years, we realized that we need a place. Therefore, we look around in Michina to find a place. And we got a, almost out, out, outskirt areas, a place. We bought it. The Lord provided. We started with a hut. And three months training. And then uh, become a Bible school. After seven years, the tent collapsed. The hut collapsed, but and uh, yes, those who came to the training become a servant of the Lord. This is God's grace only. From, that, from then on, the Lord provided uh, so that we can build a two stories building. The Lord prepared for us. I'm so glad. And it is two stories I can uh, teaching. Doesn't matter whether it rain or shine. I could continue. It didn't become like that. I thought it's, uh, everything going to be okay. But after three years, after three years, all my dream become devastated. The reason is, and that that place become small. It didn't destroy. It, it become more successful because a lot more people came. To it's not enough with that space. I thought, if it was about. Three or four years ago, that will be a place. And if that that people will be good, but more people come in. It's not enough space. So the Lord provided, and we could buy a next door. A we could build another building. And when we build that building, it's bigger than the former one. And uh, I, I told them, this, it, it, if it's this building, it will be good. Okay. It's going to be relaxed. We don't need to worry anymore. It doesn't matter how many people will come, we can receive them. And then why we build that building? My wife told me, now to can't share and uh, ex extend another room. I told her that there's enough. And my wife told me, no, one more extension. And there is a space there. And uh, when we extend, we need to pay money. And uh, we need money to, to, to extend that building. And then we expand it. It didn't become like easy like that. Before we finish, and uh, before we finish uh, that building, uh, the uh, and the building has been finished, has been done. Only the roof and uh, you know, we still need to do a lot of things. We couldn't wait until it is finished. We need to continue this training. And uh, it's full again. We don't have any more land. To if we extend, it will look like we invade other people's space. It's, it's, a, it's a joyful thing to do. 
The Lord gave us success. I can tell. I didn't think that much. The Lord is thinking for me. I didn't expect that much. The Lord expected more than that. Therefore, brothers and sisters, God is God can provide you more than what you ask for. Therefore, expect more from God. God is always provide for those who uh, who try hard. God will always pour out his blessing for those who work hard. Uh, we are to serve the Lord. To continue and go further. The Lord will continue to lead and guide us. Therefore, and uh, because of God, God's grace, there are more workers in the church there are more leaders and in the training centers there are more leaders before I need to be there uh, full time because they can lead I can go around and uh, around the world in our church there are simultaneously two three trainings happening and two three places and trainings are happening while I'm away here and uh, the church is working by itself and uh, Michina's training center is, is currently the training is running in Taunji also there's a training there and uh, those are the leaders from those train, trainees become leaders. Same as that uh, in Mongyua also is a training. And uh, in, in one each places I need to uh, teach two days in each places. And then I came over here. The Lord has brought me here. I didn't do it by myself to do the training. And uh, those who are doing serving the Lord, they, they have a desire to serve the Lord. And the Lord also uh, not only brought me here, the Lord also sent them over there. Therefore, I thank God for this. The Lord will continue to lead and guide us. I praise God and glorify Hallelujah. His name. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you with the word of God. And uh, the word that I chose this morning. Amos chapter 3 verse 7. Amos. Before God wants to tell something, before he do something, he always foretell his uh, plans. He warned people. Ahead. He wouldn't do anything without being. Without uh, warning, he wouldn't do such thing. Israel, Israel I can't deny that we didn't know it. God warned them ahead. God told them ahead. And then he does his work. Therefore, in each one of our believers' life, God told your future. If you are going the right way, the Lord will continue to support you. If you are going the wrong way, the Lord will make you return. The Lord tells you with so many ways. Therefore, God is the one who tells you. If you listen to him, there is no danger can conquer your life. The problem wouldn't control you. And uh, all the trouble wouldn't control your life. Therefore, if you don't listen to the, the word and you will find failure in your life. God didn't want you to be a failure. Because you didn't listen to God's word, you are facing with failure. 
Therefore, I want to share with you about what God foretells. One day, God told Abraham, and uh, Genesis chapter 12, came out from where you are, came out from your people, I will make you a big nation. I will protect you. There are 48 promises. And uh, he gave uh, step by step. Then Abraham came out. God told him, I will bless you. Protect you. I make you a big nation. Told you, I, he told uh, Abraham, when he came out, he received all the blessings. And uh, he became uh, prosperous. Uh, his life stopped growing. God told him before. Him, I bless you. He did. God, God foretold. I will protect you. God foretold it. I will protect you. And uh, his way is to protect uh, him, Abraham. Why God told Abraham that he would protect him? Because God knew that one day Abraham will face trouble. Therefore he foretold Abraham, I will protect you. Therefore the Lord told you you are a descendant of Abraham. You belong to the blessings of Abraham. God told Abraham as well as you. He will bless you. He will protect you. Why? He said he will protect you. Because one day you face trouble. One day you will be in a situation. Therefore God told me, I will protect you. To receive that uh, protection. You need to go in the path of God. God will protect you in his path only. When Abraham is going. In, in Genesis chapter 15. His, in his heart uh, he thought something. I'm old. I don't have any children yet. My wife is old. God told him. I will make you a big nation. But it's a big trouble now. I'm old. I don't have any children. So in his mind, he's there is a boy in my house. His name is Ilyaza. And uh, he was thinking to adopt this Ilyaza. Uh, will he become a big nation? He was in, in a, a state of doubt. Believers can become doubtful. When he sees something, is there for me? And uh, see another person. Is there for me? And see another person. Is that the one? If, if it is coincident, please forgive me. And uh, we think, so is what you like. And when we are confused, ask God. Ask God. Abraham did it. Abraham did ask God. What did God told him? No, not that one. God told him by you and your wife. He, there was a bit of disturbance. And uh, in his mind, there's a disturbance. Ask God. The Lord will protect The Lord will protect That's not. Through you and your wife. The Lord protected him. The Lord forced That is not the right one. From that time on. And in chapter 16 of Genesis. Sarah got into trouble. In 15. Abraham got into trouble. And in 16, Sarah got into trouble. Sarah was thinking, 
I'm old. Abraham is old. Abraham is old. If it is the truth, it, 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 we wouldn't get any children. Therefore, Abraham. Abraham. Go and sleep with Hagar. And uh, when we get a child, yes, that is our child. Our child. And uh, there is a custom in our our nation. And when the slaves get a child, that's our child. That is our custom. And sometimes custom can destroy God's plan. I wouldn't say that it is a customary. Sometimes customary can destroy God's plan. And be careful with that customary. Don't take it everywhere. I wouldn't say that you wouldn't take it, take it around. But Sarah's uh, customary become trouble for his, her uh, spiritual life. Go and sleep with the slave girl. And when the child Come, is our child. And that is strange. Abraham didn't ask God. Sarah didn't ask God. In chapter 15, they did ask. In chapter 16, Abraham and Sarah didn't ask. They didn't need to ask. They didn't need to ask. In 15, it's already foretold. You will have a child with Sarah. Not other ways. God already told. Abraham didn't listen. Didn't listen. He's a believer. And sometimes we can face trouble in our future. God didn't plan for you like the future like that. God didn't create a tearful future for you. He told you. Abraham didn't listen. He went to sleep. And Hagar and that they got a child. Ishmael was born. And finally, Ishmael became grown. And later on, Sarah got a child. Sarah's child is Isaac. Isaac is young. Ishmael is big. Ishmael is always bully. And then uh, Sarah asked them to get out from their lives. Because of this bully things happened. Abraham was so sad. That sadness wouldn't come from God. No. God foretold this. Already told him. You will get a child. And Abraham didn't listen. Because Abraham didn't listen. It wouldn't be different at, you know, instantly. However, one day he had to cry and the slave and the boy was expelled and Abraham was broken hearted. That's not from God. Therefore, brothers and sisters, the Lord foreseen the Lord the Lord foreseen your trouble. God knows your future. Therefore, God told you. Please listen. God always tells Abraham didn't listen. Big trouble came. Not, not only when Ishmael and Ishmael descendant always fighting against each other with Isaac's descendants. There is no Abraham today. But the problem is still there. Why? 
Because Abraham didn't listen to God's words. Sometimes parents left behind trouble for their children. If it is coincident with you, please forgive me. Therefore, brothers and sisters, whether you are children or parents, please listen to God, the one who foretells. If you don't listen, you will face trouble that God don't solve. Why? Because the trouble is not, not of God. Abraham created his own. Therefore, please listen to God's words. Uh, it, is, it will be difficult at the moment. But listen. And the same as that. Yeah, like look, look at David. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 11. 2 Samuel chapter 11. When the kings are battling. And uh, he has to be at uh, the battlefield. God told him. You got to be at the, you got to be at the battlefield. But he didn't go. Uh, he stayed stay behind. He was at the palace. Therefore. If you are not in the place of uh, the place that God wants you, and uh, you'll be in the place that God didn't want you to be. What's wrong with stay at uh, the place? No, I have no trouble, you know, I don't do any sin. Is, isn't it God's provision? Brothers and sisters. If you don't stay at the place that God wants you to be, and uh, the place you stay is the wrong place. If you don't go to the trip that God, if you if you don't go to the trip that God plans, and the if you go to the other way, it is as a curse. Nothing wrong with David staying at this, However. He should be at the battlefield. If he stay at the palace, Tumabi. he's in the wrong spot. He should be in the front line. God foretold him. That's not his place. The Lord told him to be at the battlefield. He didn't listen. He got into trouble. God didn't give that trouble to him. Because that place, and then he committed adultery with that, that Sheba. He lost many, many uh, terrible battles. The loss has been affected other people. Therefore, if you don't listen to the word of God that's been foretold, you, need, you have to face failure in life. God always foretold things. Genesis chapter 6. Noah, God told Noah, build an ark and uh, let your children and a pair of animals. And the world is in the chaos. Very soon the flood will come. So build an ark. Get into the ark. And you, you escape when the flood came. Genesis chapter 6 verse 22. No Noah did what God told him. And in Burmese so clear. And the Lord foretold. 
and asking and uh, false is two different things ma la ko asan na set thala thela ye ma so thotwa de yes sir that's a bummy's word so you know just take it chanaro yoji du a ma de tai lou phu be we believe as we need to do what god told us to do ma de tai ma lou ye if we don't do what god told us ma lou mi le me we be in end up in a big trouble pya tin tat da ma ma de tai lou ba and so in your life please ara ma lou ye no do as god told ma lou mi le me no and you in a a failure tan nen no ye ka ti mo sao de no a build the ark ti mo de o tu mi da su de we ne and uh, his family he put into the ark to do myaw myaw so do du de ha but so many people they more go mshi u they didn't get into the i take go through mi twa ja u and they didn't get into the ark phya chu pyo bi da no god fault told this shil ma mo me there will be in flood mi yo mu ba lu de ga they didn't believe in flood pa phi lo le why ji takha takha ma mo myaw bu bu le because there was no rain before ka ba u ga de ga ari chain di mo myaw bu bu ka ba ma and from the, since the beginning to up to that Noah's time there was no rain before tha jong turo myo nai bu therefore they couldn't believe there is there going to be a flood phaya chu pyo bi da god foretold them khamya myo yin le be if you don't believe chu pyo de atain phit la de no it will become the word of god become true no so no myo ya cha de and finally the rain came te mo le taka pait twa bi and the door of the ark is closed mu yoa de ka ma lu myaw myaw so ari yi de ma nit bi ti ya de so many people drown tru ko phya kin ti khai na la did god let them die mo hu no tru a tru ti da they died them tru phya ma ke hu la didn't god save them ke jin lu be ti mo sao khai na bo of course god asked them to build an ark ma ra bi da le mu yoa me so ra god for told them ji ji me ma ra bi da there will be a flood tru ma na ma da na they didn't listen ta jaw mlo tru ti ya da therefore they died chito ni go maw no ma brothers sisters ana ga go chu mien jin ye if you want to know your future ma tha de saka o na thaw ba listen to god's word chu ti nai ne no you can know your future ma de saka o na ma thaw ye if you don't listen to god's word a ma lo mi le me you can end up in trouble ta jaw no e khin ma le be therefore at no noah's time phaya chu ma de saka tain lo de atwa chao because of god's words tru lum yaw ja de they escape abraham khe ma le at abraham's time phaya ma de atain lou yin as god told they they did it lum yaw ba de and they escaped ma de atain ma lou mi de atwa if and if for those who didn't do ari pyatana ko abraham kaung kaung tu ya de and uh, abraham got into trouble da wei chai ma le be at david's time ma de ya de lou de kha ma when david do what god told phaya kwe ka o khansa de god protected him ma de tai ma lout de atwa chao because he didn't do what god told him nan do de ma pyat na tat twa de and uh, while he was in the palace he got into trouble tin ni de ma shi de mi ba ni ko ma no ma de brothers and sisters tin ni phaya kya chan ro ko chu bi ma de no god already told na chon pro phak ko ma pyo be nga ba ma ma lout bu i wouldn't do things without uh, uh, telling my people through the prophets aku phaya dalu ma ni le the lord is telling you aku di jesus ro kala ma phaya kin dalu ma de le in this time of grace how god speak to his people ta tu ma de saka be this is the word of god this is the bible phaya chano ro ko ba ma ni le god foretold what is god telling you ma ra o ti jin yin di chan sa o phat ba if you want to know your future read your bible no ko ba to la na thaung ba come and listen to the word of god phaya ma ni da di cha le me you can hear what god is telling you ago ye phaya ma ra ko na ma thaw ye if you don't listen to what god's telling ma ra ko lou mi le me you can end up in doing wrong thing ta jaw lo yoj ji tu mya a ma ma lou mi bo therefore believers not to do a wrong thing chu pyo ni de phaya saka shi de la na thaw ba listen to the word of god that being told ni dai chan sa phat ba read the word of god daily ta so yin tin a ma de ga ni lumyaw la lei me you can escape from wrong doing song song jin de ga lumyaw la lei me from failure you will escape from failure phaya ga chu ma pyo pet tin ko ba ma ma lo bu no the lord won't do a thing without telling you beforehand a phit pet le tuk ko pyo bi jin no song tat me let me tell you this true story and then i'll finish it
I have a friend who is serving the Lord. He has children. It is difficult. While he was serving the Lord and he has to earn a living. He lived in Town G, which is in the Shan State. Shan State. And uh, one day he was thinking. For the future of his children, he needs money. It's so difficult to serve the Lord. How, how can I fund my, my children's future? And uh, on that day, a, a business lady came to his, his place. And that lady is a believer. She's the one who is uh, doing business with other people's investment. And uh, all the profit, he gave back half of the profit to the, the one who invested. Yeah, that, that, the rest, she took it. Her uh, uh, business is going to uh, Thailand. Bring back goods and sell it in Taungji. And uh, she's reliable with money. People want to invest in this business with her because they trusted her. Yes, she's reliable. And uh, how will the profit they get it? And uh, that business lady wants to have the, my friend. And uh, she came and told my friend. Now I'm going to Thailand. She already have other people. Now I want to help you this time. You, you want to give some uh, capital. Uh, so, so pastors are very happy. Yes, I really want to do this a uh, long time ago. So how can I tell you? And he agreed. Come and get the money from me tomorrow. And uh, all these uh, uh, wedding gifts. And uh, he he went and sold all these wedding gifts. And then he's going to invest in that business. And he thought that way. And tomorrow the lady will come. At the time. And uh, he read the word of God. And he wasn't thinking whether to do this business or not. He wasn't in, in that way. Uh, he wasn't thinking that way by reading the Bible. He's just reading it as a normal routine. And when he read the word of God, the Bible says, God's servant, do not need to worry for tomorrow. Where to live or where, what to eat for tomorrow. And the servants are to serve. And uh, all the needs will be met by the, the master. And he read that story in uh, Corinthians. And uh, he was thinking that way. What is this meaning? What's the meaning of it? And I'm a servant. God will provide my needs. I don't need to worry. He realized. And uh, the first, whatever he thought before, he was worrying and uh, thinking. And uh, for his children, the Lord will worry for that. The Lord will plan for that. That's not his business. His business is to serve God and to do his will. For the children, the Lord will prepare. 
Then he decided. Sorry, Lord. I was thinking to sell all this uh, goods, jewelry, and uh, invest in this business. So I decided now. I'm not going to do this. Lord, you can. You are able. And he decided. The next morning, the lady came, the business lady. She asked money from him. And he said, Sorry, I'm not going to do that. The Lord uh, taught him and spoke to him through the Bible. And, and that lady, the business lady, uh, was a believer. Yeah, if you, if you got, got told you don't do that, and the lady went home, and other people invested in that place. She went to Thailand. And uh, she bought goods and came back to Tangji. Before she got to Taunji, uh, the, uh, the authority was caught by the authority before reaching Taunji. No goods she can claim back. The Lord protected that. Believers, the servant of God. Why? Why he escaped? The Lord foretold. He listened to God's word. Therefore, brothers and sisters, the Lord foretold things. There are so many ways the Lord tells. The first way is through the word of God, you can know. When you listen to the preaching, the message, when you have fellowship with each other, you can Therefore, listen to God's words. The Lord already told you what you know the trouble ahead. If you listen, yes, you will escape from that big trouble. Ahead. If you don't listen, if you not listening, if you ignore it, you will face the trouble. Yourself. The trouble can control your life. Therefore, let me encourage you. God will never do things without foretelling you. Abraham foretold. God told Noah, Noah. God told Noah beforehand. The Lord is telling you as believers beforehand. Therefore, we need to heed the word of God. As so I conclude my sharing this morning. This is the time. We are at the end time. There's not much time left for your children and for yourself. This is the most important time. Satan is working very hard with a, with a very fearful force. In the book of Revelation, Satan knew that he has not much time left. Satan is luring back people to himself. And uh, you need you and your children needs to escape from that Satan temptation. First Peter chapter five. To escape from Satan. To be alert and uh, cautious. It's looking around to swallow. Like a roaring lion. If you are careful, you will escape. Where does this come from? It doesn't come from your pocket. It doesn't come from your rank from the truth of the word of God. If you don't have uh, now so 
Now so. Finally. Now so. Machi ne chati be pola le me. You get into. Machi ne chini pola le me. Discontentment. Jesus, kare mati bide ka. When Jesus died on the cross. Shin luka na se ne le ma. Luke chapter twenty four. Tebero ne okhi dwari. When the two disciples walking on the road to Emmaus, Jesus died. Jesus told them, I will rise again on the third day. I will die. I will rise again on the third day. Jesus foretold them, but they couldn't remember. After three days, Jesus already risen. They didn't remember. So, they were so upset. And, uh, so they share with each other of their, their discontentment to one another. And while they share with each other of their discontentment, Jesus was beside them. Jesus foretold them, I will rise again on the third day. Remember, if they don't remember, Jesus, Jesus died on the cross. Jesus, Jesus rose again. Jesus beside them. Jesus asked them, What are you talking about? And they explain Jesus. You, are, you, are, you must be a guest. You are not from here. And everybody knows in town. If you don't know, you, are, you must be a Christian. You must be a stranger. He was, they were telling Jesus about the crucifixion. If they don't heed, and even the Lord turn up, they, they have to ask questions. They're not content. They are not content with other people. Not happy. Because they can't remember. Doesn't matter how much you are educated. How much you rich. If you don't remember God's words that are being told to you, you will never be content with yourself. You will never be content with people. Why? Because you can't remember in the future, yes, Satan will come and tempt us. He will take us outside of uh, outskirts of the spiritual life. And uh, not to follow him. Listen to God's words. Always receive it. For your children, receive it. Take time. Spend money. If you have to invest your dignity, do it. You need to receive God's words that I told you beforehand. There are so many churches. We can't hear God's words anymore. Many churches we can't hear God's words anymore. If we don't hear the word, Satan can take that person easily. Anytime. Therefore, brothers and sisters, your future has been predicted. By Go with God. Give time to God. Give your life. Don't worry about the future struggle. God already told you. And it will become true. The Lord has told you now. Don't worry. Stand with God. Live with God. Give time to God. Already told you. If you go like that. You don't need to. Be bothered by the future trouble. If you don't listen, David got into big trouble. Abraham, Abraham was so ugly to face. Noah, 
people who live in Noah's time destroyed. Because they didn't listen. Therefore, go as God told you. If you don't, you'll be in, in the in the wrong way. If you don't go, you will go in the wrong way. Therefore, will you go as being told? Or you go to the wrong way? From today onwards, life, whatever people said to me, I listened. Is that God's words? If not, I'm not interested. When I was uh, thinking by myself, is that uh, what God told me? If not, I was thinking myself, I stopped there. Whatever before I do, is that what God told If not, I stopped there. Why? If I don't go, as God told, you have to reap for the wrong that you invest. The disciples, the two disciples, David reaped what he sowed. Abraham, Abraham reaped what he sowed. People of Noah's time reaped what they sowed. Why? Because they don't know whether it's God's word or not. Therefore, brothers and sisters, when you go to school, you will hear two things. What God told and uh, other people's. Uh, when you go to the church, you will hear God's words. Uh, you will hear those God, you know, not God's words. You will hear two things. And uh, yeah, consider the right one. When you do business, whether God's words, or whether it's not God's words, you will see two things. Understand the right one. If you do as God told, you end up in successful. If you're doing the wrong thing, you have to face sadness in life. If now, today, if you do the wrong thing, if you have decided the wrong one, if you're reaping what you sow with the wrong thing, there is one way that you can escape. There is one way that you can escape. It is come back in repentance. Come back in repentance. And you will escape. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. Thank you.